An apparent escalation in fighting took place in East Ukraine over the weekend with shelling in central Donetsk, a city which is a stronghold of Russian-backed insurgents. The attacks remind us that even after more than a year of conflict between Ukrainian troops and Russian-backed insurgents and Russian soldiers, and a host of diplomatic efforts, peace remains elusive, and fears of a return to heavy fighting are ever-present. In today's press review here on Ukraine Today, we'll look at the latest reports on the fighting. The BBC, whose correspondent was in Donetsk, says the rebels claimed that one civilian died in the overnight attacks. Ukraine said the separatists themselves opened fire on the city. International observers on the ground voiced concern over, quote, a serious increase in tension in Donetsk. These were the first such attacks on central Donetsk since a February truce. Ukraine and the insurgents have traded blame for the shelling. Ukraine saying it intercepted radio traffic from the insurgents, which suggested that they planned to attack Donetsk. The insurgents themselves questioned that claim, saying that it wouldn't make sense for them to shell their own territory. News agency Reuters offers further apparently unambiguous information on events. It writes, Ukrainian military observers said they witnessed rebel missile systems turned toward Donetsk, shelling residential areas of Donetsk, then turning and starting to fire in the direction of Ukrainian positions. So claims and counterclaims with no one able to establish the truth, including the OSCE, Europe's security watchdog, which has been given the unenviable task of monitoring a ceasefire in East Ukraine. Now, the fighting in the region, it has long been said, is not just between the Ukrainian government and a handful of so-called local people's militias. Turning back to the BBC, we are reminded that the Ukrainian government, Western leaders and NATO all say there is clear evidence that Russia is helping the rebels in the eastern Donetsk and Luhansk regions with heavy weapons and soldiers. Independent experts echo that accusation. Picking up on that point, we have Andrew E. Kramer in the New York Times, who has been to the Russian village of Golovinka, near the Ukrainian border. He writes, a year after the war started in southeastern Ukraine, the Russian military has largely abandoned efforts to disguise its activities along the border with Ukraine. The tiny village of Golovinka, an hour or so's drive off the main highway on rutted dirt roads, has been transformed lately into a hive of military activity. The area and the activities there certainly seem to give credence to claims by Western governments that the border between Russia and insurgent-held territory in East Ukraine is wide open and is being crossed by Russian troops. As Kramer writes, last year the Russian Defense Ministry described the military buildup along the border as a military exercise and it periodically announced pullbacks after exercises were completed. However, the large army presence, which cannot be easily disguised, seems now to have become permanent. So serious shelling in Donetsk has led to claims and counterclaims and accusations. In East Ukraine, things seem calm now, but with a great number of Russian troops just across the border, fears of a large-scale escalation in fighting remain, especially with diplomatic efforts to find a solution showing little sign of success. That's all we have time for today. Do join us again tomorrow for another press review. In Kiev, this is Ukraine Today.